I've said all along that this show can't decide whether it wants to be a drama or a comedy. Well, for our last episode, we finally decided. Today, we're going for pure comedy. We start with a tribute to Hill Street Blues. Item 11. People, uh, as by now, I am sure we're all aware, hearings are underway for that spy suspect. So uh, we can expect the crowd downtown pretty early. Sounds important. Who's this suspected spy? Selling military secrets is a very serious crime, which nobody takes lightly, especially these days. Let's go. I can't help you unless you tell me more. No. Billy Hayes, boy spy, I'm sure. Spies? Who are they? Where do they come from? What do they want? They probably want you to stop airing stupid pictures like that and telling people it's a picture of a spy. It gives them a bad image. The title of the episode is a callback to Three Days of the Condor, a well-known spy movie from 1975. Apparently, somebody thinks Billy can pass for Robert Redford. Life got very complicated for Dr. William Hayes six weeks ago tonight when a federal sting operation netted him for trafficking and classified materials. Hayes was an employee of the Humanodyne Corporation. And credit for his arrest goes to this man, Matt Jasper, federal watchdog for large government defense contractors like Humanodyne. Pay special attention to him. We'll learn more as we go along, but I can tell you up front that he is not a nice man. He's been brought into Humanodyne to look for security leaks. Do you think he did it? No. Do you trust him? Sure, I trust him. Well, it's been six weeks since the arrest. Uh, why hasn't he let you see him? I don't know. Billy has stopped talking to his lawyer, his friends. He's isolated himself. It should be clear that he's covering for someone, but so far that hasn't occurred to anybody. I can't get rid of the feeling that this is all my fault. I mean, not that he blames me or anything. It's more like I blame myself. See, he tried to tell me. He said something was up, but... I just thought it was Billy being Billy. Not an unfair assumption. Let's start the flashbacks. Are you kidding? Billy, come on. It's a polygraph. It's not the Inquisition. Yeah, right. Not yet. Miss Nance, any messages? No, but I'm working on it. No, Miss Nance. Any phone messages? The company put in new phones today. Mine doesn't work. Well, then why don't you call them and get them fixed? I can't. The phone doesn't work. Duh, Billy. But she does have a package for you. Hey, look at this. Great blunder. Who's it from? Oh. Happy birthday, love mom. It's not your birthday. Yeah, I know. You mean your own mom doesn't know when your birthday is? That's sad. I mean, this thing was mailed three years ago. It got lost in the mail and only just arrived. His mom has been wondering all this time why he didn't call to say thank you, which he can't do now because he can't figure out how to use the new phone. Take it home and call her from there. The day's over anyway. And good night to you, too, our job. Minutes, sir. What do you have there? Ah, uh, it's just a thermonuclear weapon. <laughs> I'm only kidding. It just looks like one. It's just a blender. Can I see it, please? Can you see it? You mean, can you hold it? No, it's mine. Please, sir, I just want to check the model number. He checks the model number against a book and announces that he's confiscating the blender. This is now the official property of the United States government. And any willful transmission or disclosure of same it's an act of treason under the Constitution. Disclosure? What are you talking about? Can you tell me where you got this device? It's not a device. That's a blender. And I got it from my... From my, uh... I got it from my lab. Nice catch, Billy. You don't need this guy or Jasper going after your mother. And I've had it there for, um, a couple years. Thank you, sir. This guy works for Jasper, and you may recall his whole reason for existence is to root out spies and other security leaks. What's his issue with a blender? Well, it's not the uh, blender that's classified per se. It's the computer chip that runs the blender. Now, you see, the company that uh, makes the blender also makes defense satellites. Uh, different division, of course. But uh, one chip looking somewhat like another. Well, somehow the chip that decides whether to mix or puree <laughs> uh, turned up on a uh, laser satellite identifying incoming targets. <laughs> you cannot be serious. The chips got swapped. And the blender works, but the satellite doesn't. Your tax dollars at work. Wait a minute. That was three years ago, wasn't it? Well, so what? 
The chip's still classified. I mean, being caught with one today is trouble enough, not to mention trying to sell one. But he didn't try to sell anything. He tried to take it home, call his mom to thank her, and probably use it to blend stuff. Your guard didn't even give him a chance to call his mother. Billy would not sell military secrets. He probably doesn't even know any military secrets. But have you ever known Dr. Hayes to bend the rules just a little? What kind of question is that? Is he really putting something like stretching the budget to order pizza on par with selling state secrets? They need to refuse to answer that because it's irrelevant. Billy? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Gloria. Uh, no, I mean, he's not a criminal or anything. It's, it's just that he bends the rules a lot. Sometimes. I see. No, uh, he never gets caught, ever. Well, no, what I mean is that, um, can I start over? I'm not so sure that's a good idea. If you're starting to get the impression that this guy is your typical dirt collector, you're right. I want my blender back, and I don't care what I have to do to get it. Billy, you're losing touch again. Why would the guard take your blender? Because it's classified, Al. And do you know why it's classified? Because Jasper says it is. Guy's so determined to find spies around here, he'll leave no kitchenware unturned. He's off to see Dick and try to get him to do something about this. Except there's nobody in. While Billy is there, the phone rings. After some fumbling, he hears something that I don't think he's supposed to hear. Now listen, it's not only a blender, it's classified property and now it's missing. I'm telling you, you find whoever has that blender, you'll find our security leak. I'm betting the guard took it home and told his wife he bought it for her. Then again, I could be mistaken. He has to talk to Richard and find out what's going on here. FYI, the files are full of sensitive documents. This is NG. Mr. Jasper wants you to get more of these machines, PDQ. Make it SOP. ASAP. Okay. You know the crazy part? In bureaucrat ease, that's a perfectly normal conversation. It's one of the many dialects I'm fluent in. Others include scholaries, legalese, I forget what else. I know where it is. You do? I do. do where what is? Richard, come on, you know what I'm talking about. The blender. You know where the blender is? Yes. I want you to get it for me. They'll talk past each other a bit more, and Billy is oblivious enough that he can't tell Richard has no idea what he's talking about. Richard can't get in the blender because he doesn't know it's in his office. Oh, uh, any calls for me, Miss Jobs? Are you kidding? Thank you. Miss Jobs? Now he knows what Billy was talking about. Uh, I was hoping we could do a little business. Okay, I'm hooked. Now, don't try to trace this call. Even I don't know what line this is. Now look, I understand you're in the market for a blender. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Well, maybe I'm the guy who's got one. Here's the deal. I, I, I just want to give it back. Okay, no questions, no charges. Your word is a lawman. Deal? All right. They arranged to meet at the bowling alley at midnight. And one more thing. How will I know you? I'll be holding a blender. He really had to explain that. What he doesn't know is Billy is following him. Oh, hey, you so much. Thank you for this later, okay? Oh, perfect. Stop it. That's how Billy got caught with the goods. And now we know why he won't talk. He thinks he's covering for Richard. Our reporter is asking him, who is Billy Hayes? Billy isn't inclined to say much, so our man will have to do it himself. Billy Hayes. Who is he? Where did he come from? What does he want? We do know that he was born here, where he lived for many years in a little house that's not around anymore. But if it were, we think it would look like this. Actually, he was born here, but he did go home after that. If you were around in the 80s, you know this bears a striking resemblance to how these so-called investigative journalists did things. Glow was worried about how Billy will get along in jail. 
Hey, pretty women, stand in line. Make love to you, baby. Now time. Just look at how he's suffering. Jasper wants to talk. You didn't steal the blender. I can prove you didn't. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm sure it did. Uh-huh. <laughs> you want to know how I know? Voice prints. <laughs> That's right. I made a recording the night I got that phone call. I've had your voice on file for months. But the prints didn't match. Billy says, then what am I doing here? Oh, you fit in somewhere. One spy is better than no spies. In other words, he's fine falsifying or suppressing evidence to get what he wants. Jasper says, you give up whoever you're covering for and all this goes away. But this is a one-time offer. What's your answer? Tell him, Billy. I hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. What you say? Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Well, baby, oh, baby, okay, don't you Okay, that's it. You have it your way. Well. I get two for the price of one. Go on. You know something? He sings way better than Johnny B does, and I believe he may also really be playing that guitar. We cast the wrong guy as the musician. By the time Jasper leaves, the whole cell block is singing along, and he slinks out of there in humiliation. It's beautiful. Lincoln, time to be voice printed. Right. What do I... What are you doing? I'm asking for your voice print. You didn't mind the polygraph. Uh, maybe something's happened since then, huh? By now, as we saw, Elle realizes this goon is up to something that may not be completely on the up and up, so he's getting nothing out of the rest of the team. You're making a mistake, Doctor. Tough guy. Say it into this. Tough guy. <laughs> Square off against him, Jack. I, I mean, Jasper. Let's see who's tougher. Johnny B isn't likely to be intimidated by the likes of you. Civil disobedience, Stetmeyer. Oh, where will this end? Talking to this. What, what should I say? That's enough. Dick, on the other hand, if he saw two bunnies together in a field, he'd assume they're talking about him. Billy is finally talking to Gloria, mainly because he wants her help. Gotta keep an eye on Stepmar. What for? Because he's the guy I'm covering for. She refuses to believe Dick is any kind of spy. Billy says he probably isn't, but won't say anything more. She's still angry with him, but she agrees. Billy, if they give you any trouble in here, just mention my name. One of the most delightful characters ever. It's too bad Gloria didn't get more chance to shine. Richard Stetmeyer? <laughs> Hard to believe sometimes, isn't it? Big spies from Little Acorns Grove. <laughs> wow, great work, Mr. Jasper. What, now we grab him? No, not yet. I'm gonna really stick this one good. Whoa, uh, who is this? Mickey Schlepp, disbursement manager. You know, he moves things from one building to another. Jasper doesn't want the lamp. The man says, it goes here, room 161. This is 191. Stetmeyer's, not mine. Uh, so it does. Sorry about that. Joke's on me. <laughs> I guess that makes up for the last time, though. And here it comes, the answer we've all been waiting for. What does he mean by that? Oh, I made the uh, exact opposite mistake a while back. 191 for 161. Never did find that thing, though. Oh, it'll turn up. It's hard to misplace a blender. He put the blender in Dick's office when it was supposed to go here. You know what that means? That means... I know what that means. It means it was all a mix-up. The blender was never stolen. It just went to Stetmeyer's office instead of yours. And it never was a spy. It's a good thing they found out before this went too far. You better call the boys in D.C. They'll get a kick out of this. That's going where you think it's going. Dick is packing up his office because he's sure as soon as Jasper checks his voice print, he's had it. I've working with Hayes this long. I've been on borrowed time as it is. After tomorrow, 
I'll just be an eraser smudge in the Humanodyne flow charts. And they won't have Dick Stetmeyer to kick around anymore. Just think how much you're going to be missing. You don't have Nixon to kick around anymore. It's back! He gets a phone call. A disguised voice wants to meet him and get the blender from him. Dick says, it's him. It's the real spy. You guys can come along and get it on film as we capture an actual spy. They'll meet at that same bowling alley. Out at Miss Nance's desk, she has finally figured out the phone system. She also knows how to listen in on other people via the intercom. Johnny and Elle decide to give Jasper a bit of reverse spying. And ready? We've spent six months looking for a spy. Now you want to tell the guys in Washington there never was one? <laughs> uh-uh, not me. I happen to need a spy right now, and if a little scheme on Stedmeyer gets me one, that's the way it's going to be. What's that all about? We have to warn Richard. First you have to find him. Dick calls Billy and lays out the whole plan. Billy can't talk him out of it. He has to get out of there. One of his pals knows a way. It seems if a man want to jump, where a man want to be is the laundry. Maybe he'd check out the ventilator back at number eight. He might see that the lock there is broke. Pop that hatch, and it's Streetsville, nonstop. Thanks, man. Um, I have a question. Wait a minute. You've been here a while, right? Now, if you knew about this, why are you still here? That was the question. It needs my space. And that was the answer. Miss Nance said you were here. What's going on? Jasper's trying to set up Stepmeyer. He left before we could warn him. Oh, Billy was right. Billy, you talked to Hayes? We don't even know where Richard went. I'm going to try him at home. Auto redial, what is that? The last number dialed. Worth a try. Hello? County Jail. That means Billy might know something, so they need to go see him. There's just one problem. Now what? Look, it's Billy. That. Time for a little abetting a fugitive from justice. <laughs> Now they have to hope they're not too late. Recording the apprehension of an actual spy by a private citizen. Very exciting. As a matter of fact, this is what television journalism is really all about. It's so important that I wanted to... Wait a minute. What is this? Uh, more on this story as it develops. But it doesn't look good. Better step on it, Al. Afternoon, Stedmeyer. Oh, my... <laughs> Fancy meeting. Say, you wouldn't happen to be the guy. Jasper, I want you to, uh, I, I want to tell you something. Before you do anything, I want you to know this is being filmed for national television. <laughs> Jasper points out that it's not and says, hand over the blender. You know what happens when we assume. Come on now, Stetmeyer, I've already got your voice. I just need the photo. Be a good sport, huh? Jasper, I, I want you to know the pressures of these last, the pressures of this whole business have made me do unusual things, things I, I, I never would have dreamt of doing. <laughs> like what? Well, like this. That's unusual, all right. Freeze! Federal agent! No. Don't shoot you right down. That's even unusualer. Go, Richard. I go, hell now. you. No, that is true. Boom, 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 boom. It's good to have friends. Ow, 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 ow. Give it. Don't move an inch. Let go of him, Lincoln. It's good to have friends, but Jasper says it's better to have a gun. Now every one of you's in trouble. Wait a minute. Where's Hayes? 
You're going to regret this, Stedmeyer. Somebody get me up. Jasper is wrong, but he may win anyway. That's it. Party's over. See why I didn't involve you guys? Good work, Hanratty. You followed me, huh? Hanratty, what the hell's he doing? I'm sorry, sir. I really am. Cole came in after you left. I have to arrest you. Arrest me? Or maybe he won't. Put your hands down, Billy. Uncle Sam is willing to forget that any of this ever happened. I suggest you do the same. Do you ever get the feeling that someone changed the channel while you were out of the room? That only happens to you, Billy. Our reporter will wrap up his story, and all that's left is an epilogue. I only hope we made the right choice. I promise you we made the right choice. It is the only way. This blender thing was becoming too hot. And we don't want anything to strain our two countries' healthy relationship. And I just wish we could have lost the whole mess in the paperwork. Not just drop the charges against Hayes, but I guess with all the publicity, Jasper had to take the fall. Salt? No, thank you. <laughs> there are layers upon layers upon layers to that scene. For starters, you kids, don't get uptight, most all of you are kids from where I sit, might not know that's supposed to be Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev had only just taken over leadership of the Soviet Union, and the level of tension the Cold War had reached frankly scared him. If I may be blunt for just a second, only a fool wouldn't have been scared, whether you were a head of state or an average citizen. He revamped almost everything in the Soviet Union and made it possible for the two sides to sit down and talk. Nuclear arms treaties between them were called SALT, or Strategic Arms Limitations Treaties, though neither country actually ratified the second one, hence Gorbachev declining the offer of SALT. Then there's Jasper taking the fall because a blender could have caused World War III. It wouldn't have taken much more than a misunderstanding over a blender to make it happen, that's how on edge everybody was. So these two guys who ostensibly haven't even met yet cooked up a plan to de-escalate it and pin the whole thing on Jasper's combined ambition and lack of ethics. It may be the single most wonderful scene in this show, and it's what we go out on. Not bad. The show had an amazing cast. I have my quibbles with Johnny's music, but that's a matter of preference and personal taste. It has nothing to do with Mr. Miller's talent. The stories were sometimes hit and miss, but most of them hit. The characters were believable. Even Billy, in fact, especially Billy. We all know that one person who just cannot shut up. If such a character is done with moderation, they can still be sympathetic. Billy was badly overdone, and his jabbering wasn't interesting or amusing. It was just there, like that mosquito that won't go away and you can't squash. Then there was the underuse of Jane to the point where she vanished around ten episodes in or so. Dick would still talk about Gloria being on probation, but suddenly she didn't have a probation officer and nobody noticed. The whole thing about her pregnancy and her relationship with Billy got left dangling out there and blew away. Whoever thought people wouldn't notice was wrong. Then there was the music. I won't dwell on it. I'll just say to anybody who's thinking about making a TV series, spend the money to get the real music or hire somebody and write your own. But I think the biggest factor that kept the show from succeeding was the lack of focus. Am I watching this to see an interesting dramatic story, or am I watching it to get some laughs? It was impossible to guess from one week to the next. You might sit down and think, oh yeah, last week they were pretty funny and it's been a rough day, only to tune in and see Gloria helping a jewel thief and Johnny getting his heart ripped out. If the whole series had been like that episode, we would have known this was a serious drama. If the whole series had been like this episode, we would have known we were watching a pure farce that was designed to give us an hour of fun and laughter. But most of them were a weird concoction of both and it just didn't work. By the time you've thrown a viewer back and forth like that a few times, they realize they're emotionally exhausted and don't need this. Watching TV wasn't supposed to be a workout unless you were watching Richard Simmons. As I've mentioned, things didn't turn out so well for some of our cast. Others did well. Max Wright went from here pretty much straight to starring in ALF, the show that put him on the map. 
fucking cancer took him from us in 2019 at the age of 75. And I hope I don't have to mention that Courtney Cox went on to star in one of the biggest hits of all time, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. As always, thanks for going on this journey with me. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you again in the next TV Fails. Our reporter is asking him, <laughs> asking, and now we know why he won't talk. Good grief. A disguised voice wants to meet him and get the, blah, blah. <sighs> I can do it. I can do it. Jeez. Uh.